Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Mad Mom Looks Podcast. My name is Sim. Along with me is my friend whose name is Abdul Hakim Al Ameriki. Yes, Did sir. I pronounce Ameriki right? I think so. I mean, I'm not Arab, but uh, that's my, my best attempt at transliterizing. Uh, well, Abdul Hakim, I know you by another name at work, but we're not going to mention that for whatever reason. <laughs> um, it's good to keep the, the online persona separate from the IRL persona sometimes. That is my my philosophy as well, and we'll get to that soon. But <clears throat> for the record, um, Brian, oh, I already said your name. I said it. That's all right. That's not actually my name, but that's okay. That's not your name. Yeah. Your that's, name is... That's a common mistake, but that's not my name. Your, your actual name is... Uh, We'll, we'll hide it. We'll, we'll just forget about it. Um, Abdul Hakim here works with me at my company. He just recently joined, and um, and I was like, well, you know what? I got to have a, a new type of episode with, with him, and and I didn't want to have any conversations with him, and I was purposely avoiding him <laughs> for a long time at my work, and I was like, you know what? This is going to make a great episode where I finally get to sit down with Abdul Hakim here and have a wonderful conversation hopefully something that we all can benefit from um you became muslim how long ago uh i i count by how many ramadans because i forget the date but this will be my sixth ramadan so. sixth ramadan yeah. are you so fasting five during the ramadans months. yeah mashallah all of them all 30 yeah of course that is amazing you didn't take any sick days be honest so last year, I did get a little bit sick one day. I felt really bad about Made it. Made the phone call to God, huh? <laughs> God, can't come in. Can't can't handle it today. I tried to resist, but I mean, I, I physically couldn't work if I didn't do something. So unfortunately, that one particular day. Yeah. But, you know, for the most part, did you find every out every other day. You aware of all the loopholes regarding I'm, fasting i'm aware of them i try not to take them unless i absolutely need to you're a stand-up guy i don't i mean not to make myself sound like i'm good or something but. sheikh Amr is watching this right now and he's like this son of a <laughs> he's he's trying to corrupt corrupt a new muslim nah. sim is trying to corrupt a new muslim that's what he's he's thinking right now well i mean i know you're supposed to take the concessions if they're there because you're yeah. not taking them you know the sunnah is to take them but I try not to take them unless I have to. That's awesome. That's that's the way it's supposed to be, right? I mean, you 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 gotta be. It's you, you gotta feel bad when you do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't be like, oh yeah, I'm sick today. I get to eat. Right. Like, no, like I, I've I felt bad and I would feel bad. Hopefully yeah. in the future, that won't be a problem. So you know what happened recently at work? I purposely didn't tell you the story for this podcast bunch of dudes came over to my desk they said hey sim what's going on i said what's going on there's something we got to talk to you about i'm like what what's going on i mean this sounded something like it was something serious and uh they said you know the new guy we know like he's muslim but he's doing something weird in the washroom <laughs> <laughs> i was wondering i was wondering when that would come up he, he had his shoes off and yeah, his yeah. foot in the sink. <laughs> I don't even put my my feet in the sink. I don't know if, you, if your foot was actually in the sink, but I'm kind of filling in the blanks right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, and, and I'm like, whoa, that sounds serious. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm like, that sounds kind of like uh, those ISIS extremist people. Yeah. <laughs> the, the way I do it, you just kind of take some water and wipe it over your shoes. But... I digress. I, I, I explained them that there's differences of opinion regarding what's called what do. I yeah. told them I do it too. I do it real quick so I don't get caught in the bathroom. I'm usually yeah, yeah. looking left, looking right before I enter the washroom and get my business done. Make sure, you know, you check underneath the stalls and see. Yeah. yeah. But you don't do that. I saw this guy. This guy don't, he don't give a bleep. He had his socks off. <laughs> was standing right there like a well, soldier. Like a true soldier. That's. That, that I was that was inspirational, bro. I saw that and I'm like, man. Well, all good is from Allah. What was your impression when you first saw me? Um, Did you think this guy's a modernist Muslim? I don't know. I mean, come on, maybe be honest. A couple years ago. Don't you ago, hold back on me? Don't you I, hold out? I have a history of being very uh, 
judgmental and harsh and yeah. argumentative and i'm trying to move away from that so but i don't honest. i didn't know you you haven't talked to me you haven't you talked to me to so have... i was actually starting to think that maybe you didn't like me or something because and then you explained you know you're trying to not burn material for the for the show but for a while i was like maybe he's just too busy or he doesn't well you, you know, I, don't know. I am i'm i these guys man the moment you finish something a project or something at work we just give you another thing it's like well here's more like if you ever play uh tetris or mm -hmm. dr mario yeah, yeah you know when you knock down some blocks they just dump a whole bunch on you when you're getting to the 10th or 11th level you're a gamer you yeah, should know yeah. what i'm talking about yeah, they yeah. just dump yeah, that's what course. they do yeah, yeah. they just they don't care that's how it's been lately on our side too the first couple of weeks were pretty chill and then now it's just piling up so. yeah well yeah. let's let's talk about how you became Muslim. sure uh, what so, what what in God's name, would possess you to? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious because I mean, there, recently a, a non-Muslim uh, emailed me and he's mm -hmm. like, um, you know, I'm interested in becoming Muslim and I'm not sure how to approach it yeah, yeah. with my family and blah blah blah. And I'm like, man, this is tough because I don't know what to say to you because it's. I mean, I ended up telling him like, hey, don't. Um, every situation is different, and at least from whatever experiences I've had with people who accept this, um, you know. Mm -hmm every no one can tell you what what they know uh, what they should do and every situation yeah, yeah. should be unique in itself but maybe uh you could talk a little bit about how you accepted it, accepted islam while yeah. i take a sip of water because my <laughs> sure. tongue is dry sure sure uh so basically um i'll try to tell the whole story with all really brown water right here yeah well you know coffee is the muslim drink yeah but that's Another topic, I guess. But yeah. so uh, I was born into sort of like a non-practicing Christian family. Um, like we'd go to church for Easter and uh, Christmas Eve and stuff like that. But it was really more of like a, a culturally Christian kind of thing. Um, when I was younger, I do remember going to Sunday school regularly, but that kind of went away after a while. Uh, at one point, I did try to start taking Christianity seriously. Uh, I lived in uh, Houston. I went to Joel Osteen's mega church, if you know who Joel Osteen is. Yeah. Um, so for a while there, I really tried to take it seriously, but I just could never wrap my head around the Trinity. And um, I remember there's one particular day where we were in like the main service and they were doing all the, the music portion, you know, and uh, I just had this weird thought of like, why are we doing this? Like something is something's not right here I don't know what it is I don't really know what to do with this thought or with this information but uh, something is just not right and I kind of you know put it aside and I tried to uh, you know continue being a practicing Christian I guess or trying to take it seriously uh, and this was roughly ninth grade yeah so 10th maybe 11th grade uh, I met this kid in my chemistry class uh, who was more of like a punk rock kind of guy. Punk and rock? Yeah, yeah I mm. called him Punk Rock Rick because his name was Rick. So that's just what I always called him. But um, he showed me this documentary called Zeitgeist. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. But um, mm -hmm. no, I have not. The, the first, it's in like three acts. The first act breaks down uh, re religion as a whole, but Christianity specifically and breaks down how it's basically another form of paganism and all the parallels between Christianity and like uh, ancient Egyptian paganism, stuff like that. So when I saw that, that sort of turned me off to Christianity and by extension, all other religion. Because my reasoning was, well, if this is wrong, if this religion is wrong, then all religion must also be wait, wrong. Wait, wait, break, break it down. What exactly about this documentary, what was, um, kind of broke your faith? in Christianity well so the concept of the Trinity for example is ubiquitous throughout pretty much every pagan religion or not even not necessarily a Trinity like Trinity itself is popular but the idea of multiple gods obviously I mean we're Muslims we avoid shirk so we know about the mushrikeen right um, so there's that there's the concept of um, Jesus Isa being dead for three days and then rising that's actually based on like a constellation uh, phenomenon or a phenomenon like with the stars and yeah. astronomy and whatnot that was then anthropomorphized into the Bible or Paul's teachings or whatever it, it was. It's been a few years since I've seen it, so I'm a little fuzzy yeah. on the details. But um, 
but basically it, it broke down it said you know the modern trinitarian understanding of christianity is basically the exact same as all these other pagan religions it just has a different coat of paint on it different okay. skin if you will so well, now were you having any doubts prior to watching this documentary well i had that one that one doubt that um that one day when it, they were just doing the musical portion of the service and i just um you know, it's, I can't really explain it. I don't even know how to like verbalize yeah. it, but I just had this feeling of like, why are we doing this? Something's not right here. I don't, mm. I don't know what it is. And I didn't know like what to do with that information or that thought. So I just kind of ignored it or I kept it in the back of my mind or whatever. And then also there was like the Trinity, like I, the Trinity, I just couldn't understand it. I couldn't wrap my head around it. I yeah. wanted to, and I kind of just accepted it because like, you know, I don't understand this, but if this is the truth, then you know i just accept that i don't accept it but believe it anyway but um i'm asking you all this because i i've always been super curious about <clears throat> i mean this is like the unknown you know the mm -hmm. as they say in in arabic you know why allah subhanahu wa chooses some people over others in, in their acceptance of islam are there any attributes or characteristics within someone that makes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose them over others in what we call hidayah, right. in providing guidance to anyone who is non-Muslim and, and uh, uh, showing them the, the path to Islam. And that's something that always kind of gnaws at you because, you know, you, you're always trying to understand why people go to hell, right? I mean, at least from our paradigm, from the Islamic perspective, it's always, at least for us born Muslims, it's always uh, maybe for me more than others but it's always been something on my mind like why was someone else why was why was i chosen to be muslim over someone who should have had an equal right to be guided and i mean that in itself has its problem saying that question because as a muslim you understand that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who made that decision way before you can even come up with that idea in your head but yeah, go on i, I, I digress i'm no, yeah, rambling again so um once i sort of once i saw that documentary it's got some other aspects to it but that first act um sort of caused me to reject christianity and at that point all our, all other religions so uh, i became an atheist at that point um so i was pretty staunchly I moved from being, you know, trying to believe in God to sort of the exact opposite, very staunchly anti-religion. Um, I never really, like, I saw a couple of things that were about Islam, but I didn't really, like, hate Islam specifically. I hated all religion, and Islam was just included in that. Yeah. Um, like, you'd see things about, like, you know, honor killing your daughters and, you know, stuff that we know is not from Islam, but it's presented that way, and the the masses don't know any better so um i was pretty staunchly anti-religion i used to read like you know dawkins and um i tried reading origin of species but it was super dry. i mean i got through it but it was super dry i didn't really enjoy it but trying to like understand about uh the theory of evolution and all that stuff like, yeah. i tried to go down the scientific you know quote-unquote rationalist yeah. uh, path and that lasted for the majority or the rest of my high school as well as my college years um, and in college I went to college for our career but um, that was really more of my backup plan because I was actually pursuing music um, mm. I used to be a rapper so really yeah yeah so um, music was my plan. Like Christian rap or no 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 because at this point I was an atheist so, oh, okay okay yeah, so, so and and how how long is this period of you so, being an atheist about six years so the rest of high school like 10th 11th 12th grade and then i was in college for three years so okay roughly six or so years holy cow yeah and m&m uh, &M. <laughs> yeah i get I, <laughs> I got that a lot but uh so i i went from being like staunchly anti all religion to then being like i mean there's no reason for me to hate these people yeah. if they if they're doing what they think is right just like i'm doing what i think is right you know i disagree with them but what do I get out of hating them? Like I just carry that around in my heart all day and it doesn't yeah. do me any good. So I started to do what a lot of atheists do and I did the create your own religion thing mm. where um, I don't know if 
you being a board Muslim, you're familiar with this, but uh, people who reject any sort of like established organized religion, um, you know, we know that you always worship something, even if you say you're an atheist, like your life uh, pursuit is focused on something that's your object of worship. So I did the sort of create your own religion where um, I just kind of made up my own rules and my own theories. You, you found some worked. fundamental truths in life. Um, some some things that all humans should uh, aspire towards or, or can agree towards and possibly yeah. is, is that something yeah but sort of with my own filter on it yeah you could say um, you know so I was into music and the whole lifestyle that goes along with it um, you know I was very deep in Jahiliya at that yeah. point and then towards the end of college uh, I had met this girl and uh, we ended up living together for a little while, um, ended up not working out. And that whole experience of that relationship falling apart, it sort of like got my attention to like, no. it feels like, feels like something's in control here. Yeah. Because the way we met was very like, uh, I don't want to use the word miraculous, but like, like we met through like a like a dating app and then we ended mm -hmm. up living in the same apartment complex like yeah almost in the same building so it was sort of like it feels like there's something in control here like it's not like it doesn't feel like it's all just random like because that was my perspective before was you know the universe is all random none of yeah. this means anything but what about this girl so made so it cool. not feel like it i mean random. not so much the girl but like the whole relationship ending oh, okay because i was okay. like super devastated for a long time but it sort of got my attention that like, okay, I think something out there is trying to like tell you women are bad. Get <laughs> no, nah, not that. But I don't know. It's hard to explain. Like maybe if there's other people out there that have kind of gone through a similar thing, they can articulate it better than I can. But something's off. Like you know, like like Allah says, they, he he puts them through uh, calamities once or twice a year that perhaps they'll repent. Right. So like kind of yeah. along that line. You felt like there was something you were being taught something uh, yeah, through or, through your pain. Yeah, or just like something was trying to get my attention. That's really the only way I know how to, mm. to, to verbalize it is like I didn't know what it was. And then I, I didn't even want to really give in to that thought because I was like, no, I'm an atheist and this is all just my ego. Yeah. And this is all uh, superstition and I don't want to. So I kind of pushed it away. Yeah. But, you know, the more I sort of was alone. Um, so... Uh, this happened in Waco, Texas, by the way, and then I moved to Austin, Texas. I forgot to mention the whole part of living in Texas. I used to live in Texas. Um, so that happened in Waco. I ended up moving to Austin by myself, and I was there to pursue music, but that was also like the lowest point in my life. Uh, my parents had just gotten divorced. This girl had just dumped me, and um, I was basically alone in Austin by myself. I had a couple of friends that had moved from Waco to Austin at the same time, but um, most of the time I was just alone and, uh, you know, alone with my thoughts and it was a very dark place. Uh, but there was one night where I was just kind of in my apartment drinking alone and I just had this Drinking thought, water, I assume. Well, like I said, I was very deep in Jahiliya at that point. I just gave you a hard time. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, and I just sort of had this, like, I don't know if you'd call it a moment of clarity or like a moment of weakness. I mean, you know, at the time I might call it weakness, not now, obviously. Uh, but I just sort of was like, God, I don't know if you're there, but if you are, like, can you point me in the right direction here? Because I don't really know what I'm doing yeah. like, with my life and everything. And I, because I had that nagging thing in the back of my head that like, yeah. you know, like I said earlier, it feels like something's trying to get my attention and like, I don't know what it is and whatever, whatever. So that happened that night. I kind of forgot about it. I was still pursuing the music thing. And um there was this club I used to go to in Austin that they had open mics every Tuesday. So yeah. um, I would go do my one song performance or whatever. And I met this guy. Uh, his rap name at the time was Villain. And uh, he and I sort of gravitated to each other pretty much immediately. He had a big beard and everything. I didn't know at the time he was Muslim. I just thought he was a guy with a beard. So um, we kind of had similar styles and similar appreciation in music at the time. So we just kind of, uh, and our personalities, you know, you, you meet people, you vibe with them or you don't. So, uh, we kind of vibed and started hanging out, started discussing like, uh, projects we wanted to work on ideas, stuff like that. 
Uh, but then one day he came over to work on something and he had his wife with him and she was like in hijab and everything. And I was like, oh, I didn't even know you were a Muslim. It had never come up before. Um, and then I, I don't remember how it happened. I wish I could. But somewhere that day with, with him coming over to work on whatever we were working on, uh, I just started asking questions about Islam. And um, every answer that he would give me, it was like, well, yeah, that's kind of what I always thought it should be. But I didn't know a religion taught that. Like, um, for example, like Tawhid monotheism. Like yeah. the, the Trinity never made sense. So his con the, he explained the pure monotheistic belief. I was like, well, yeah, that's, you know, no, no in this middle stuff. Just there's creation and creator. That's what I always thought it should be. But, you know, no one ever told me that wasn't a religion anywhere. I think the most that I knew about uh, be before before you had talked to him, did you have any um, understanding of Islam or no? Not really. So like the most that I had was because um, I'm sure you were around during 9/11. You're not yeah, that young. I, mean, I was in like fourth grade. Like I, I remember. It oh, happening. okay. So okay. So I like I, I was like, who's this Bin Laden guy on the news? Like, I yeah. thought his name was B E N, like Bin. Ben. <laughs> um, All right. But. Uh, so like I was around, I was alive. I remember 9/11 happening. I didn't understand why everyone was so upset about it. I remember I was like, "This is in New York. I'm in Florida at this point. So why do I care?" But I was also in fourth grade, so I didn't really yeah. have like the capacity or whatever. Um, but beyond that, like the only thing I really knew about Islam was like a paragraph or two in my ninth grade social studies book. Okay. And I remember reading about uh, the night journey. They didn't call it that, obviously, but they said, like, you know, Muslims believe that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, ascended to in, in Mecca or, or whatever they had in the textbook. And I was like, oh, that's just the same as every other religion, you know, whatever. I didn't really, like, pay much attention to it. And then I would see, like, you know, things happening in the news with particular Islamic groups and whatnot, but... Even before I was Muslim, uh, I sort of had the perspective of like during my I say so during my atheist phase, I was also very like anti-establishment at the same time, um, like anti-government, so on and so forth. So did you did you read from The Godfather, Noam Chomsky? No, I've never heard of that. Young I've heard kids. that guy's name. You but... guys have missed out. Okay, but go ahead. So like he's my favorite liberal. I, I know I've heard the name, but yeah. I don't really like... It's pro possibly the greatest mind of the 20th century, but mm. go on. But, At least uh, among the non-Muslim camp. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was sort of like anti-establishment, anti-government, and I, I would see things happening in the news, and I'd be like, well, of course these people are fighting back. We're invading their country, and we're like plundering their resources and killing their people. Like, would we expect them not to fight back? Yeah. So, And, and I didn't even consider it us. I considered it like... The government was doing that. I'm not a part of it. Yeah. I don't agree with it. So I sort of like sympathized with, with Muslims, but I didn't... My my atheism prevented me from investigating it anymore. I just sort of dismissed it as the same as every other religion, basically. Uh, so where are we in the story at this point? Now, you, you just met the uh, brother who is... Right. Um, right. Uh, telling you, answering the questions regarding the faith. Right, right. Yeah, so villain comes over. Um, he he taught you about how Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, or monotheism essentially and uh, yeah and, and just like every question I would ask and I wish I could remember what the questions were but just like every question I would ask the answer would be like oh yeah well that's what I always thought you know or that's what I thought it should be or that's what makes sense or even I remember asking specific, uh, specifically about Jesus and I was like what's the Islamic position on Jesus and you know he explained. He's a prophet like every other prophet, but we don't attribute divinity to him. We don't believe in the Trinity, so on and so forth. And I was like, well, yeah, that's that, that's what makes sense. So basically, like, I just started, uh, I started hanging out with him more and more, pretty much every day or every weekend, if not every day, because um, we we were still doing the music stuff together. But I was also trying to learn as much about Islam from him as I could. I was definitely interested in learning more, but and I sort of felt like at a certain point I felt like I wanted to become Muslim, but I didn't want to do what I've seen so many Christians do being a former Christian where you just like accept the religion, you buy a crucifix necklace and then you never practice or take the religion seriously. It's just a label like yeah. it doesn't mean anything. And I was like, I don't want to do that. So I want to make sure I know what I'm getting into before I jump into this. 
and I want to be absolutely certain that it's the truth before I accept it, you know, like officially. And and I also knew that I was probably going to have to defend it at some point. Like if I'm if I'm going to accept this, there's going to be people who disagree with me, particularly my family, and um, I'm going to have to be able to defend it and know what I'm talking about. So I probably studied with him for a month, month yeah. and a half maybe. We watched a really good documentary series called The Light that uh, sort of explores Islam, Western society, global uh, politics and events and how Islam fits in all of it. It's a really good documentary series. Uh, and then I've, at a certain point, I felt like I was right on the edge, but I was just waiting for that last like aha moment or that last reassurance or that last like push to to go over the edge you know like I, I was very much inclined towards the sun i remember one night we went out to get something to eat and i was like well i guess this is going to be my last bacon cheeseburger uh wherever it was we were eating at the time I'm, I'm sure they got fish or something um but he told me either he told me or i listened to a recording of it i, I forget where but i heard the story of hamza where uh you know rasul was attacked he came out to defend him and said to Abu Lahab, I think it was, that, you know, well, I'm on his religion too, so what do you think about that? And then um, he went back to his house later and was wondering, you know, should I have done that? If I go back on it now, then, you know, I'll look silly, but if I... Now, is this from, like, a YouTube video or something, or...? I think he might have just told me. I don't know. Okay. Like, it's... I have a really bad memory. Yeah, that's fine. So um, everything sort of runs together at a certain point. But, you know, basically the story of Hamza where he eventually said, you know, Allah, if this is the truth, then please open my heart to it. So I heard that story and I was like, well, why don't I try the same thing? So yeah. one night before bed, I was like, you know, Allah, if this is the truth, then please cause my heart to accept it. And then I sort of waited for like the windows to open or you yeah. know, the light to shine on my face or something. Yeah. But, you know, nothing really happened. And so I just sort of went to sleep. But the next morning, the only way I know how to describe it is I felt like I was already Muslim. Like I felt like I, I, I knew I was going to do it. I just had to like, I knew I'd already accepted it. I just had to make it official like, yeah. and take my shahada. Did you know how it. to make it official or? Yeah. Cause I mean, uh, he, he told me like, I, I knew as much of the basics as I possibly could. And I think he had explained the shahada at one point, uh, or if he hadn't, he just told me later when I said I was, you know, ready. Yeah. But, um, you know, yeah. I would have had so much fun with you, right? I would have said <laughs> there's a secret handshake involved. Yeah, there's all yeah. kinds of different rituals you got to do. Work for me to do. You got to clean my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it's good I was with other reverts. Then. Uh, yes. The Lord guided you to the right man. Yeah. Because. But, uh, yeah, so that. But that's awesome. Yeah, so, uh, so um, you accept Islam and your first experiences with the Muslim community. Tell us about that. So I think I accepted Islam either on a Juma or very close to a Juma. Yeah. I'm not sure which. But I remember going to Juma very soon after um, taking my Shahada. And I felt both at home and out of place at the same time. Yeah. Like I, I was excited for this new thing but because it's so new, I wasn't comfortable with it yet. So it was sort of both sides happening at the same time. And then, of course, people would give me salams. The brother who was giving me dawah, uh, his name's actually Abdullah. I learned his, his name eventually, as I didn't just call him villain all the time. Yeah. Um, but he uh, would introduce me, and people would give me salams, but, of course, I have no idea how to respond. So I just yeah. kind of stand there awkwardly and smile. And, you know, that was sort of, uh, I was like, I wish I knew what I was doing because I don't like feeling yeah. out of place. But at the same time, it was also very exciting. And um, I just had a, sat through Juma and uh, tried to follow along in the prayer. I just kind of watched what everyone else was doing. I'm sure I've, I've missed a couple of things. But, uh, and then ever since then, I just sat with this same brother for years. We became really good friends. Um, we I actually ended up living next door to him. Uh, so he was in like a duplex I was in this other like student housing thing in South Austin. And uh, as soon as I took Shahada and I went back to this house I was living in, it was like 
it was like a party house basically yeah. and as soon as i took shahada and came back i was like okay this feels like shaitan's house now there's like alcohol and drugs everywhere and like well, i don't want to be you just felt foreign in there yeah i was like i don't want to be here anymore yeah. so very graciously he allowed me to move in with with him and his wife in their spare bedroom for a few months and uh but he lived in this duplex and the way it all worked out alhamdulillah was uh, the neighbor in his duplex ha- only had a few months left on their lease. So I was like, well, let me scoop in and get that lease, and then we can be next-door neighbors. Nice. So um, we ended up living next door to each other, and uh, he was one of my best friends for a really long time. Awesome, so, awesome. Yeah. Hey, you still in touch with him? or? Not anymore. Uh-oh, you got into a fight, didn't you? <laughs> That's a whole separate Ooh. story. You so. did it. You got into the new convert enthusiasm. <laughs> I knew it. I knew this was coming, Ryan. That's one thing I, I I really got tired of hearing. Yeah. Was oh, you're just a new convert. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell me about that. Okay. Oh, you're overzealous. You'll you'll get over it. It's a phase. And I'm yeah. like, no, I know what Jahiliya is. I, I maybe you don't know, but I do. And like, yeah. I want to. If I'm going to do this, I want to do it all the way. You know, I don't want to yeah. just passively. I mean, not that I'm attributing goodness to myself. We all have our sins. Yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, you, like, you've as seen. Far as my attitude. You've seen. You've been in. You've been been in it and yeah. you know exactly what that lifestyle what it's empty it's, it's and it's not just that but like the absence of islam yeah. is so clear to you yeah for us it's like for us borners i guess and that's the term for us <laughs> that some converts give us birthers <laughs> i don't know if that has any obama kind of connotations well. but but uh at least for for us it's um w- some of us fantasize over it like oh you know i wish i could you know go clubbing or i wish i could do this or i could do that I, yeah. you know whatever it is um and then there there's plenty of born muslims who engage in everything that a non-muslim would except maybe not eat pork you know yeah, yeah. and there's those guys too i don't know if you heard about this new show everyone's talking about on hulu called rami mm-hmm. have you seen it no that's apparently apparently one of these birthers mm-hmm. Or burner borners uh, who accepted, or he's not. He's basically doing all the things non-Muslims would do, and probably worse. Um, but anyway, um, it's presented as like he is a Muslim, but he's yeah, he's a Muslim, but he's conflicted. But then he's having sexual relationships mm-hmm. with a woman in Ramadan. All kinds of nasty stuff. We'll talk oh, about so it later on another episode. You can check yeah, it out. Yeah, that's that's the kufar trying to brainwash you. But. Uh, yeah, so uh, go on a little bit about how this new, um, new in into, into what we sometimes, uh, whether it's mistakenly or not, um, consider overzealousness of a, of a new convert that that you got yeah. tired of. Yeah, Aaron. so I mean, like I I loved and I still do like the the Arab like aesthetic of like thobes and kafiyas and and all that. So like I would dress in a thobe all the time. Um, I never had a shawar kameez until I met my wife and she got me a couple from yeah. India. But, uh, so I was in thobes all the time, kafiyat all the time. And I felt like, on the one hand, like I hope it wasn't um, like materialistic, but I, I would feel better if I was out in public like fully thobed and kafiyat up, like looking as Muslim as possible. Oh, wow. Because I, I wanted to like, I was always the anti, like yeah. I was always the contrarian. Uh, like like I was saying before, anti-religion, anti-government, or yeah. whatever. But now I found this thing that's the truth, so I can take all of that anti-attitude and put it towards the truth now. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I thobed up all the time, so on and so forth. But you know, there's always that slight uncomfortable. Like I know I stick out right now, and yeah. like, but I try to push the the shyness away or the anxiety away and try to be firm instead. Um, but I would also hear a lot in, uh, from people that, and I still hear it sometimes, like, oh, you're just a revert, or you're just a convert, oh, it's just a phase. Oh, like they, they like belittle having enthusiasm about the dean. That's awesome. And, and you know, you know when I knew you were a true, a good man, I don't mean to, you know, uh-huh. you know, uh, My you know I, I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't mean to compliment you in front of your face, but um, before you got hired, at our at our company and for those of you who are just joining the chat um ryan here uh works with me worked with me for uh past two months at least uh, yeah, it's been about two months about yeah. two months and he um is my co-worker and we're kind of getting to know each other for the first time uh and we never talked or hardly f- 
for maybe for a few minutes, but no. I need your help on a ticket or something. Yeah, yeah. So, um, what was I going to get at? But yeah, when you were for, before you got hired, your manager uh, talks to me. He's like, "Hey, Sim, you know, do you have any problems with uh, going to prayer, or you know, do you have any issues with your, you know, your Friday prayer or, or things like that, or any accommodations related to your faith?" I'm like. No, I don't. But why are you asking? You know, and I'm like, who the heck ever cares about our, um, you know, whether or not uh, you know we're, we're being able to practice our faith um, freely? And and he said, well, you know, I'm I'm actually trying to hire someone for this open position, and he uh, the guy's apparently a Muslim, and he wants to know if we have a prayer accommodation and things like that, and. I was like, wow, and and he's like, that's basically his main contingency, like in in terms of accepting the position, he wants to make sure that these things are okay with, uh, with uh, with our company, and I was like, wow, okay, and I gave him the down low, and I told him like, hey, this is what 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 happens, well, at least from my end, and we have you know a prayer space at our work and things like that, and everything that you need to practice your faith, at least in the ritual sense mm. but um that that's how i knew like i'm like man okay where well, i'm gonna there, there's gonna be a hard hitting g coming <laughs> I about that. and I, I got scared to be honest i'm like mm. you know what these guys are gonna see this guy's gonna see uh me with uh, non-muslims and possibly be a little bit judgy make judgy but mm. we, and, and uh and uh, we have to because you know i mean that. well the thing is i'm, I'm i've been for most of my life kind of torn between this american culture and this quote unquote islamic culture you know where these two sides are always um trying to reconcile both you know trying to make it as um, non-contradictory as possible you know you don't want you want you want both things to be not at conflict with each other because there are things like when I was growing up, you know, you, you grew up with the, with rap around you. I grew up with metal around me. Rock and roll was was really uh, a huge part of my life, and um, for a large part of after you know I started taking the dean seriously, studying under teachers and things like that, I, I dropped it. But there was this still like this kind of I, I felt like I'm not me. I felt like I'm more like my friends who are, you know, outwardly very Islamic and they have, um, you know, a very open display of Islam. And, and but I felt like I was kind of out of place. I'm like, yeah, you know yeah. what, this isn't this isn't who I am. And I felt like um, that that culture, that quote unquote American culture had like a, a very permanent effect on yeah. who I was and I, I felt like I was kind of fighting against it the whole time because well so just to backtrack a little bit when I was growing up no I never engaged in like like drinking and things like that you know but there were some haram things I did engage in but I'm not saying I'm trying to say like I trade away, I stayed away from the major sins let's just say let's just yeah. put it that way okay without giving divulging to me details yeah, we're not supposed to reveal our sins right, right. so I, I for the most part alhamdulillah i was able to keep away from that you know and some of my friends were able to even understand that but to an extent um and as the years kind of went on you know I, I tried to be more authentic and i felt like you know what in order to find my own balance i have to um, have some kind of um, uh, some kind of a, a congruity or something somewhere where I can meet in the, in the middle um, and, and find a happy medium. But um, I find it, I know exactly in, in terms of how you are so enthusiastic about the faith and, you know, you, you like to dress in, in, in the thobes and, and all the Islamic attire. I, I know where that's coming from because that was me at right after college, right? And I was like, you know, I got a, um, I'm just going to, there's like, pick, there's videos of me in some Sakir Naik video where I'm wearing like this, uh, the Palestinian hatta thing. Mm -hmm. 
people always every few months they'll send me that picture. Hey Sim, I found you in some Zakir Naik video. I'm like, all right, all right, I know about it. Yeah. But um, and, and and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. There's no way I can poop on your experience. You know, like like what you're experiencing right now in terms of your your enthusiasm. I I, I wish the best for you. I, I want you to. I'm I'm inspired by that. You know. You know, seeing that someone who um, has made the sacrifices that you have, you know, you and, and especially to a lot of Muslims who are growing growing up in this country, um, seeing someone like you is it, it's inspirational. But do you ever feel like, hey, well, maybe I sh if I showed or, or talked a little bit more about my um, life in hip hop, I could be more. I could have more of an effect on people. Well, so I do now, like I've moved away from doing music, but I do write like, I'm not really sure what to call it. Acapella rap, spoken word, poetry. Okay. Um, you know, I, I hope that, uh, are you completely anti-music and then like, like no instruments at all? Yeah. I mean, not as, even as electronic? far as I know, music is haram. So okay. I, I try to stay away from it. Um, but you know, we have the examples of, the predecessors and many of them were poets yeah so um you know and i enjoy like the the reason why i liked rap and hip-hop was like the technicality like the the craft of combining as many rhyming words as possible and word play and like not so much the the club, configuration of the, words yeah like not the club hopping like party aspect of it but like the technical skill like yeah. sort of the like i'm a black belt type of you know feel like yeah. i'm a master at this sort of thing um, so that's what really attracted me to it. So I still try to do that, but the, the, I've hesitated to like put it out publicly for a long time because the whole point of being a rapper is, Hey, look at me. And then in Islam where our intention is supposed to be for Allah, not for me. Yeah. So I, if I write something, I try not to write about me. I try to write about like the Ummah or a topic or something that's not like centered on me because most of what I used to write before was all about me, me, me. Yeah. And, um, you know, struggling with like Ria and trying to make sure I'm not showing off and yeah. I have the correct intention. Um, I mean, I've wrote things like years and years ago that I'm just now putting on Instagram because I, I hope inshallah that I finally feel like I can keep my intention under control. Yeah. I hope. So, so you, you, when did you get married? I understand that you were About married two or three, three years ago. Okay. Yeah. And did you find her through halfhardine.com? <laughs> there are sponsors to say yes. Yeah. Smile and say yeah. I, I found it through another company. All right. But, um, a competitor. A competitor. You can well, say. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to the to the sponsors. But. No, no. Bob Ali's awesome, man. He's like, man, there there should be more of us because the the more uh, services people sign up for, the odds increase of them actually finding a spouse. He he never is uh, against anyone or or, or is uh, competitive in that respect. But you could go on. Uh, How did you find your wife? Uh, so I went through this Muslim yeah. matrimonial service. Um, had a couple that didn't work out and then eventually found her uh she was living in hyderabad mm -hmm. um where the motherland of sim yeah and uh so she was in hyderabad at the time she was born here most of her family is here but at that time uh her her parents and her sister were all living in hyderabad so awesome um you know we talked the way that this particular uh site worked is that if you messaged the girl her wali was automatically cc'd so that oh, wow. the full like conversation and hopefully was as halal as possible that was one thing that was really frustrating for me as i found so many books and so many lectures and pamphlets on the wedding night and everything after it but yeah. nothing explaining how do you actually find a wife in the first place huh so like i've been looking for something like that if anyone i mean now i know but like, yeah for a long time there i was like how am i supposed to marry this person if i can't date them or, true like, like well, when you first asked that question, I was just thinking, well, duh, it shouldn't it be like how anyone else would find him? But now that you mention it, you, you it's not as simple as, you know, how, hopping onto a website. How does communication happen? Yeah. Like, Cause I heard who's all involved? kinds of things. Like, yeah. I heard that, I heard that um, the suitor could view the woman without her hijab. I've heard, you know, even further than that, but I don't want to say. Yeah. 
Um, I've heard that the the father has to be in the room. I've I've heard some people they call it. Um, I think they called it f- fat, like opening, but it's like they called it halal dating. Well, what are you calling fat? No fat. Oh, my f- Arabic is bad. But fat with the age. The okay, end. gotcha. Yeah. So like I heard all these different things, and I'm like I couldn't. Like I have my few like handful of sources I rely on, and I couldn't find anything about the marriage process. So that like about finding a wife in the first place, like the nikah, everything after the nikah, that's like fully documented everywhere. But the finding a wife part was the hard part. But anyway, so I um, I, I found this sister after a couple other sisters ended up not working out. We uh, agreed. We were on this. My my biggest concern was being on the same page in the dean, and that was there. Um, they did have an option to exchange photos, which I wasn't sure about, but I was like, well, how are you supposed to marry her if you've never seen her and vice versa? I had someone reject me because of my photo once. So I was like, Oh no, that's fine. Whatever. Um, but, uh, so women are ex- evil exchange. No, nah, no. Nah. If you yeah. treat, if you treat them right, they're actually really nice. The problem is we get <laughs> pissed I'm, off and we don't treat them right. I'm joking. But, uh, so we planned the wedding, like six months out because they had to like plan to come to texas which is where i was living at the time so it wasn't like i've, I've heard some people like okay we're going to plan for the wedding but you have to get your college degree first yeah which i disagree with uh, so it wasn't anything like that it was just like a logistical thing like it was going to take six months for her to get here uh, but we got married in the masjid in austin or one of the masjid in austin um and that was like two or three years ago three years ago and it's been so you uh, got married at a masjid Nice. And um, was it like a big gathering or? There was a lot of people there. I didn't yeah. want, we both agreed that we didn't want to do like a, some big elaborate thing. We wanted to be like on the sunnah as much as possible and keep it simple. So she was uh, a practicing sister as well? Yeah. No, I wouldn't have married anyone that wasn't. How was her family regarding, uh, or how did they feel regarding her parents, a white guy? Her parents were totally fine with it. Mm-hmm. Um, the rest of her family uh, aren't exactly 100 percent on the same page as far as the dean goes and not that I'm, I'm not trying to like say anything bad about them it's just you know different pages sometimes yeah. so and, and of course they're daisy and unfortunately no offense many daisies are very cultural and they, oh, yeah, they put are. that uh in front of well, a lot of i should say a lot of people are cultural it's not exclusive to yeah. daisies um so at first they were unsure they were like this isn't going to work out he's white he's going to want to eat american food he's going to want to uh, you know, there's going to be too many cultural differences. Uh, uh, he's not going to want to eat desi food. Yeah. 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 And, um, but I think that was only like a couple people in the family overall. I think they were cool with it. Nice. But then once they got to know me, you know, all of any concern that was there from what I'm Work I'm that white privilege, bro. Work it. Yeah. Work it. I disagree with racism, but if I can get an <laughs> advantage out of it. Hell yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> it's. White privilege, use it to your advantage when you're trying to marry anyone from India, Pakistan. That will... No. But that brings me to my next point, though. You know, right now there's this huge... Um, there's an undercurrent of uh, people who are kind of low-key hating on white people. Um, did you experience any of that, being part of a new Muslim community? No. Um, alhamdulillah, that's good. because, And I'm so glad to hear that because you just hear all this junk online about, yeah. you know, about how why people are are inherently evil and that they there's some well at least they don't say it in that that blatantly but there's some kind of undercurrent of racism that you feel when when you when you're talking to certain activists online or communicating with them on twitter or whatever are you on twitter no good don't ever go on twitter i I only do it for this podcast otherwise i wouldn't be on there it's um it's sad in the sense because there, there's there's um, injustices that are happening in the world that they're bringing light, that they're bringing attention towards, and they're making people aware of it, but they're utilizing people's identities against them, and they're not making the world a much more. They're not they're not bringing people together. They're not building love between people, you know, and that's that's something that you'll. I, I know you've been listening to our podcast and you've probably heard some of this stuff. Yeah. Um, but what, 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 what have your thoughts been um, as you've heard about our, our podcast? And before you start, um, it was funny because I didn't want you to know about our podcast when you first started the company. And I'm like, man, I don't know. What if he, 
what if he's uh, you know things that were we're not a, a we're not a, a positive influence on Muslims, you know. What yeah. if this one? What if that? You know, there's a lot of the, the, yeah. this kind of stuff that happens between. That's nonverbal communication, but when two Muslims are working so closely t- together, they're like, eh, I'm not sure if I should tell them. And then one of my coworkers spilled the beans. I'm like, Oh, why'd you tell them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was weird. It wasn't even apropos of what anything we were talking about. Yeah, uh, just because that particular person, he's a very nice guy, but he likes to talk. Oh yeah, sort of at length. And I was like, you should start a podcast. And yeah. he was like, Well, Sam's got a podcast. And yeah. I was like, Oh yeah. And he's like, Yeah, Mad Mom Luke's Muslim podcast. Check it out. And I was like, Okay. And I think I texted you that same day. I was like, Hey, I didn't know you were in a podcast. Yeah, yeah. But um, as far as like the racism thing goes, like. To first start, like I don't, this is I don't want to sound like one of these SJW people because I really no. can't stand any of that. But like I don't, I really hate using this phrase so much. But like I don't identify as a white person. Yeah. I identify as a Muslim. That's any awesome. any culture, like like I'm from the South. Southern people, Southern white people are very proud about their culture. Like I'm I'm not like that. Like yeah. I I just think of myself as Muslim, and that's it. So. Starting there, historically, yes, white people have done a lot of horrible things. And I understand the the backlash, I guess you could say, that's happening now. Because I, if I'm not misquoting, maybe if Sheikh Hammer is watching, he can verify if this is a, an actual hadith or not. But I believe, I remember hearing a hadith that said, whenever one extreme happens, another extreme happens to, to counteract it or balance it out. or whatever. Yeah. So when I look at like the circus of politics, social whatever the word is, social justice, whatever. Yeah. All it is is one extreme coming to answer the other extreme that happened before. So, like, I don't really even engage in it because I don't... Yeah. It doesn't really even pertain to me. Like, I'm concerned about the Muslims overseas who are dying. I'm not concerned about yeah. what pronoun I call you. Yeah, and, and one of the few conversations we've had, I thought, uh, I think I messaged you. I'm like, hey, so uh, what, what are some things that you're interested in regarding Islam. And one of the things you mentioned was Hakimiya, which is Islamic governance. Tell, tell me a little bit about that. Why did you get so involved in uh, learning about uh, Hakimiya? So it's a long story. Um, the mo- the majority of that came from the brother who I was initially learning from. Okay. Um, I mean, I already had like a, I guess you could say like a conspiracy theorist perspective on things before islam like as part of that zeitgeist uh film i was talking about earlier part two of that is explaining how 9-11 was a setup and the inside job so i know as soon as you say that everyone thinks you're crazy whatever think what you want but like i was sort of and still am on that sort of perspective so i was already like anti man-made government to begin with um and then so when studying with this brother um he a, a big thing that came up in Austin and I guess it's happening everywhere is democracy and uh, trying to in, encourage Muslims to participate in democracy and dismo- democracy is Islamic democracy democracy is Shura all those things so yeah. he basically explained to me how you know I don't want to cause a, a, a argument but um, explain to me how democracy is shirk and yeah. how the only valid islamic governance is is the khilafah the sharia the okay islamic state you know oh my you god listeners so. i did not put this up to him this, this man I'm, I'm this is the first time i'm having a conversation with him i all he said when in that text message was well, these are the two three different things i'm interested in regarding islam they know i'm I, i'm really into the islamic movements and stuff like that's where i kind of learned my islam from initially when I was becoming a Muslim, and I know they're going to be thinking that you're you're planted. Tell I, them I, I didn't I plant you. That. I get that a lot. I get that I am baiting, or that I'm a plant, or that I'm a spy. No, 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 no. That. They're going to think that I'm using you to further my uh, argument towards you know Islamic governance because oh, you know you've okay. seen our uh, on our page we have quite a few episodes regarding Islamic State and you know and things regarding not Islamic State the terrorist group. Islamic governance. The, I should. I the, should. The concept me. of yeah. the Islamic State, like yes. what, what the real law, Islamic Caliphate. What, 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 what law established in the Yes. Yeah. So, we we we've, we've had quite a few episodes about that, and something 
many of us on our team feel very strongly about that, that it is in the true answer to the problems of the world, that that an Islamic government is the only one that is vested in Muslim interest, yeah. that all other governments, no matter even if they are from Muslim countries, they're going to be interested in either their ethnicity or their nationality or, you know, lining their own pockets in, yeah. in some um, more corrupt governments across the world. So, um, but, but, but I'm, I'm just, I'm amazed that you came to that conclusion on your own. I mean, rather than, you know, um, pressure or influence from uh, Islamic movements, you know, because when we were growing up in the 90s, or late 90s, I, w I should say, there, the, the Islamic movements were like bustling and there was five different groups and everyone was, you know, a student of some some group or another. Yeah, yeah. And um, everyone had their own interpretation of how Islamic governments, Islamic governance should be implemented in the world. And I just find it just amazing that you kind of came arrived at that conclusion by yourself. Well, I wouldn't say it's by myself. If it, if I mean... All guidance is from Allah. Of course, I'm first. Allah. Uh, if it wasn't for this brother teaching me, I probably would have never known about this. Yeah. So, um, and like the few scholars he pointed me to, you know, if it wasn't for that, then I probably would have never known about it otherwise. Yeah. So, uh, no, I, I and I apologize if you thought I meant plant, not like you are a government spy. Uh, I meant like the listeners are going to think that you know, oh, I brought somebody who naturally would agree with me. Yeah. But. Uh, I, that's how no, that's a, get, this is purely coincidental. You get called Khawadiji, uh, Wahhabi, yeah, ISIS all, lover, all, all these something. things all the time. It's yeah. like, I, I, there's nothing I can do about it. You can, and, and I'm not someone of knowledge to even tell you, yeah, what is correct anyway. Like, I have, I'm a layman, I have my beliefs that I uh, that I believe are correct as a layman, but. I can't go around giving fatawa. Obviously, I'm I'm just I'm just a guy. So that's awesome, man. I mean, and and I think, uh, you know, just from hearing about you, it looks like you got your head on straight, and you're you're um, you're seeing a floor. You're not letting all the noise bother you. No, well, it's been bothering me. I'm just trying. Which to, noise? Just all of it, like the whole ummah is arguing with each other. Okay. While we're being killed. Yeah, Wide I meant like more like, personal noise, like you know, people who are detractors who are trying to you know uh, pull you down uh, and say like, oh, you know, you're just kind of going through a youthful. Oh uh, um, well, I mean, thing. I've had to deal with that too. I mean, I, I'm only just now trying to like not be in the noise because like I yeah. used to debate everybody. I used to argue with everybody. Yeah. Um, you know, I I had my copy and paste Dalil ready to go at a moment's notice. And I just like, it just got to be exhausting after a while. And I was just like, it's not all this time I'm spending arguing on Facebook. You know, I should be learning Arabic or I should yeah. be like, it's not, it's like standing in front of a waterfall and trying to stop it. Like you can't, you can't. Yeah. A lot the guidance is in the law's hands. All you can do is say, this is, you know, this is the evidence accept it or not. You know, it's not, I can't do anything. I'm just doing me, you know? So. That's awesome. But it was a long time to get to that point. And I still struggle with it. Like I, I even I think I've even argued in live chats of this podcast and comments and stuff. And it, I, it's really difficult for me to like keep my mouth shut. Yeah. But I'm trying to I'm trying to get better about it. You know, it, and what what happens is at least you the more knowledge you acquire, the quieter you get yeah. because you realize there's so much gray or there's so many nuances to certain realities that you're faced with and and things don't become as clear as they are and there are by no means am i saying there uh, are there not any clear yeah. uh, clear-cut issues what i'm saying is that with some of the more complex issues it's not as easy as sometimes you think it is until yeah. you realize like how many layers there are in the faith and and how many uh, different dimensions there are in things like fiqh, right? And yeah, yeah. where you're, you know, things that you thought were definitely haram, well, all of a sudden you, like w when I first became uh, more practicing towards the faith, you know, I, I thought, you know, for sure music is haram. And, and um, then I, you know, a as time went on, I was, um, I, I got more, uh, I think I, I had more differing opinions. And, and then eventually I, I, I kind of eased up on it, but, 
I'm just giving you an example of, of different perspectives that I've had um, um, that that changed, and I had, you know, completely black and white views on certain interpretations of the faith, whether it's a Sufi interpretation or the Salafi. I don't know if how familiar you are with all the different yeah. groups out there, but um, I, I ended up, you know, completely taking one eighties on, on, on things that I never thought I would. Mm. Um, just, you just realize how little, you know, um, yeah, yeah. but, uh, well, what in terms of, of schools of thought, what are you more inclined towards? I don't really like. I still don't really understand why there are madhab to begin with. Like, I it's Welcome been explained to, to me like many times. I'm like, I sort of get it, but yeah. it never sticks. So, and my wife is always talking about how the madhab were never supposed to exist in the first place. And uh, there's a book she always talks about by um, Bilal Phillips called "The Evolution of Fiqh." Mm. That, that uh, according to her, I haven't read it yet. Um, but breaks down the history of how the that have happened and so on and so forth. So I don't like attribute myself to any madhab. I just, if I need to know a fatwa, I check Islam QA or another site that I use from a, from a different scholar if I can't find it on Islam QA. But as far as like the, the differences between the madhabs, like I would like to at some point learn, you know, in like a student of knowledge context like all the different uh all the different differences of opinion and which one is the strongest but like right now i just i mean maybe if i really was dedicated i could find the time but right now i just uh basically just rely on islam qa for any like individual thing i need to know so um so some of the listeners are asking why do you think democracy is shirk explain that um, there's Mr. Several, Abdul Hakim, there's, you've just pulled yourself into. Yeah, I figured that was gonna happen. Um, first of all, I'm not a sheikh. I'm no. not a scholar. I'm not a student of knowledge. I'm just a layman. Yeah. So let me just. I'm not. I'm not pretending. I'm not trying to pretend to be anything that I'm not. And, and are, are you part of any Islamic movements currently? No. Okay, so you're just from your own. I'm, you I'm know, just a speaking guy. from Abdul Hakim's brain. You know, this is not someone holding a torch to him. You better say this or you get kicked out of our group. No, no I'm not any, in any groups or anything like that. But there are, I, I can't sit here and quote the ayat. I have to pull up my notes. Yeah. So I actually brought my laptop in case this happened. But yeah. um, one of the law's names is Al-Hakam, the, the ruler, the legislator, the judge, so on and so forth. Um, that's sort of a base. There's some ayat in uh, Surat An-Nisa that talk about uh, referring legislation, judgment to Tahut. Tahut is anything worshipped or obeyed other than Allah. Mm -hmm. To be a Muslim in the first place, you have to reject the Tahut and then believe in Allah. So. And what's the creed of democracy? What's what? What what's what's the testament of faith in terms of? If you were to describe de democracy in one word, well, if you want to break it down in like um, catchphrases, yeah, you could say that democracy is the system of the people by the people for the people, whereas Islam is the system of Allah by Allah for Allah. So if you if you go in a democracy and you vote, I consent for you to rule over me with man-made law, which allows what Allah forbids and forbids what Allah allows you're you're so consenting it, to a to something other than what Allah revealed so what you are saying is that these are on its own is when, when you don't put any conditions on for the people by the people that you're not you're not saying that oh I'm saying this within the confines of the Sharia you're saying just an open and determined kind of like how we talk about feminism you know, you know how we uh, yeah. like uh, open-ended um, equality for men and women. There's and, and then there's no parameters of the Sharia that this um, phrase is operating under. This is what you're talking about. Like when you're talking about democracy in an open-ended terms like that, without any parameters that hey, you know, um, without the umbrella of the Sharia that you're operating uh, under to create laws, mm -hmm. then you're you're saying that man is the one who creates laws right so, and, so but when you say man cannot be legislator man cannot legislate 
someone will come and say, okay, but what about like traffic laws, for example? Yeah. Like, there's nothing explicit in the Sharia about traffic laws because vehicles didn't exist back then. The difference is in an Islamic governance, if you're, if you're in the, at the point where you have to derive a law, you're deriving that law based on Quran and Sunnah with the intention of doing what is pleasing to Allah, doing what's correct, trying to obey Allah, even if, you know, technically you are legislating this traffic law, but you're basing it like your foundation is Quran and Sunnah. Yeah. Democracy throws Quran, Sunnah, any religion behind its back, yeah. doesn't pay any respect or attention to it or attention to it at all. And instead, you're saying that I get to decide what's right and wrong, not a law. Or mm. this, I, gi I give consent for this human being who is a creation like me, not the creator, to decide what's halal and haram for me. There's, um, there's a verse, and th again, this is the English, my bad memory of the English. It's not the Arabic, so detractors will always say, you don't even know Arabic. You're right. I don't know Arabic. You're absolutely right. Um, but there's a verse where... Allah says they took their priests and rabbis as lords besides Allah. And in the tafsir of that, there was one time where Rasulullah saw this person walking up and he was wearing the crucifix necklace and he recited that ayah. They took their priests and rabbis as lords aside from Allah. This person said, um, you know, we didn't worship them or we didn't, uh, we didn't take them as lords. Rasulullah's response was, did they make halal haram and haram halal and you follow them in it? And he said, yes. And then Rasulullah said, that's how you worship them. Nice. So that creates the, or that is like the foundation of worship isn't just like what building you pray in or yeah. like worship is everything. And that includes law and legislation. And I'm, I'm, yeah. I wish I had the notes no, more no. readily available. Like I'm no. doing a bad job of explaining uh, it, but. Brother Abdul Hakim, a lot of people will take issue to what you're saying right now and say like, well, how do you expect Muslims to survive in America if they can't participate in democracy, you know, and, and you you want them to be already ostracized as a community where we're not in the conversation. Um, you, you know, the old adage, if you're if you're not at the dinner table, then you're what's for dinner. I think that. so at least I think that's what it is. There's the theoretical answer and the practical answer. The practical answer is I don't know. The theoretical answer is we're not supposed to be here in the first place. Rasulullah forbade us from living among the kuffar, from living among the mushrikeen. He said our campfire should not even be visible to each other. Yeah. So all these arguments about like, well, how are we supposed to survive in America? Like, we're not supposed to be here in the first place. We're supposed to be separate in, in a Muslim country, in our own Islamic society. Now, the practical reality is that all of our Muslim countries are being bombed to oblivion and there's nowhere to go. And so it's sad. So, they're, they're, they're not even operating within Islamic parameters. Yeah. There, there, there are countries who are operating under secular laws who are, um, you know, that they're, they're, they are societies where you are, you could do the same level of haram. It might not be as out in the open, but to a certain extent, you could do pretty much everything you do over here, over in Muslim countries. You could get alcohol, drugs, you could party. Um, all the vices are available to you. The... The issue at hand, at least uh, that I feel, is that I think I think Muslims are here for a reason. I'm not just saying that they should be um, that they, they should leave to another country. <clears throat> at least, what I'll say is this: I think it's different for each person. I think for each family, it's different. It's very easy for Muslims to get enveloped or engulfed into American society and allow the prevailing ideas or the zeitgeist of of American culture, uh, Americana, to overcome their Islam and yeah. to the point where it's not existent. Um, take every generation of, not every generation, because I would say there, there are some, some Muslim brothers who are much more practicing than their parents, but in, in a general sense, as each generation progresses, the, the next generation, at least in more affluent societies, the next generation loses um, quite a bit of their Islamicness or, or their yeah, Islamness. And you get dazzled by the dunya and then you... And it works for it. us too, even when, when the Muslim world was expanding as Muslim laws and Muslim culture enveloped 
countries that were not primarily Muslim countries, those people eventually adopted the prevailing ideas or the thoughts and, yeah. and the faith of their time all across the Muslim world. That's how it, people, yes, it's correct that people weren't forced to become Muslim, but the laws of society, the culture, yeah. made it conducive for them to become Muslim and adopt Islam as their faith, you know? And, and how can we expect it to not work the opposite way, you know, in, yeah. in conversely? That you know, our children won't. That that same effect won't happen to our children. You know, yeah. you can't you can't have it. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't say that. Oh, yeah, we didn't convert. Um, we didn't forcefully convert Muslims when the Islam when the Islamic uh, Caliphate was expanding, but then say that that effect won't happen to um, to your kids when you're in America, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, that's what I fear the most for my son. Like, yeah. I don't. I don't want to send him to public school. I really don't even want to send him to Islamic school because I keep hearing that the Islamic schools aren't much better. Yeah, I mean, it's so, different. Look, I, you know, I don't. I, I stay away from that because I, I know there are a lot of well-meaning Muslim parents. I know people who are close to me who just don't have the bandwidth or they don't have the ability to give them the Islam. The little Islam that they know, they they yeah. can't pass that on. They they want to make sure that um, they they're at least in part of a Muslim culture, and they know that Islam is going to imbue itself on them somehow. You know, maybe yeah. There, there's bad kids in every school. Of that, course, that's yeah. you can't avoid that. What I'm saying is. Uh, what works for one person not, might not necessarily work for everyone else, yeah, yeah. and um, I, I can't ever tell someone not to homeschool. I that I would say if there is one thing that you you should consider highly, I would consider homeschooling after yeah. having two teenagers who've been through public school. I would I, I probably if if I was in the right financial circumstances, I would have given it much more thought. Yeah. yeah. Um, but homeschooling is not cheap, man. It, yeah, it's yeah. not low. This, this is uh, it, it, it's uh, still like, it's, there's still a lot of things that are being tested out yeah, yeah. in that kind of education. Yeah, that's the struggle because like on the one hand, I don't want to be dunya minded and only thinking about job and career and money and nothing else. But at the same time, so many things require money. So it's trying to figure out the balancing act. Yeah. I mean, as far as like the society, the, the societal level that you were talking about, I mean, like our, our, the dean is supposedly implemented from top to bottom, from societal foundation, the individual level, the family level. You know, it's not just, we say it's a complete way of life, but I wonder sometimes if we really grasp what that means, like that it includes everything, that includes government, so on and so forth. I don't want to repeat myself, but... Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of people in, in the chat who are having a, a big conversation on democracy right now, whether yeah. we opened up a can of worms with that. Yeah, Oops. I figured that way. And like, I feel bad because like, I can't sit here and, and recite all the evidences yeah. to you, but I, I do have them saved. I could bring them up if anyone. There's might. plenty of resources out there. Now, yeah, I mean, did, did you, um, what's next for you in, in terms of you're acquiring Islamic knowledge and well, furthering your faith and all that. Uh, I mean, right now I'm, I'm really trying to focus on Arabic. Mm. I've spent pretty much the entirety of my Islam so far, like trying to study Akita and make sure, make, trying to make sure that I'm on the correct belief. And I feel like I've kind of... Don't spend too much time on that. A lot of that stuff is... Well, I know, like, we, it, once it starts getting into the point where it's, like, super theoretical and I start to feel like I'm overwhelmed, then I step back a couple steps. But I feel like... A lot, a lot of that those discussions happened when Muslim uh, theologians were discussing with uh, Greek, not necessarily Greek philosophy, but, um, yeah. you know, Western philosophers, and um, yeah. uh, they were engaging a lot. You know, it's funny because many of our... Uh, scholars translated some of the works like from Plato or Aristotle to the Europeans and then the the Western Enlightenment period started from our own translations that yeah. we provided to Europe. It's funny it's yeah. like that that we were kind of the ones who created the uh, the Enlightenment period to some extent at least. I'm not saying we're completely responsible for it. Yeah. Um, but 
but no one knows about that because yeah. in in school in social studies you're taught okay there's the beginning part yeah. here's the dark ages in europe nothing happened over here don't pay attention to this part of the world there was nothing going on and then now we have the civilized like they completely ignore the entirety of islamic history and, yeah. and how like how much of an impact on the world muslims have really had so by by extension we don't know that including myself because i know yeah. very little about that and then so like we don't have we have a lack of pride in like our identity because we don't know about it so well, now you you said something about correcting your akita and making sure your akita is good now what what in particular are you focusing on like um well with this issue of democracy like i don't want to be a khawarij and i don't want to be a morgia i want to be whatever the truth is i just want to be honest. you just want to be you know find a, a happy middle ground where yeah it, it's it, um you you don't want to fall into the extremes of anything exactly i yeah. don't want to but but you also have to be careful saying that because the western definition of extremism and the islamic definition of extremism are two different things oh so so if i tell you that i i want to be i want to rule by like not me be a ruler but i want quran and sunnah to rule yeah to me and you that's not extreme that's our religion to the west that's extremism because you want your religion to prevail instead of man-made law you know right. stuff like that yeah that so. could certainly seem extreme to a secular liberal society but in some ways but um i guess a, a correct an addendum i would add to that is like you know we're, you don't want to force it on people you know i'm not going to force you to follow something you don't believe in like you're not going to implement islam onto uh, a society where you know hardly Muslims constitute what not even two percent, you know. Um, so you, you Islam came to the world to, um, to masses that were willing that, that were willing to accept it, and they were willing to have Islam ruled over them, right? The, the people weren't. Um, you didn't hear about mass rebellions across yeah. the state right you heard about uh the spanish inquisition which was concocted by or um organized by actors within europe who right, right. managed to push the 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 muslims out of spain but but also it, pushed it, christianity out of europe at yeah. the same time so. and 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 yeah that goes to other philosophers like Nietzsche who were saying that this is uh the birth yeah. of a new age where you know um god is dead not in the literal sense but in terms of how the western world world is evaluating or looking at yeah. uh, the future in its relationship with faith and and uh, and uh, god yeah so i mean like from my understanding you have the theoretical belief like the 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 true like skilled scholar can take the the theoretical and know how to apply it to the practical yeah and as far as the practical goes, I have no idea, and I'm not claiming that I do, but I at least want to make sure the base, like for myself personally, that the foundation and the base is correct, because if that's not correct, then yeah. anything else I do is not going to be correct by extension either. Yeah. So that's why I've, I've spent so much time on this, but I feel like I'm kind of, you know, obviously I'm not a scholar, but from a, for a layman, I feel like I'm kind of done with this, and I need to like move on to something else. Like I need to work on my manners, adab, akhlaq, so on and so forth but right now i'm really trying to focus on areas. your manners and adab are, are pretty good man i'll, I'll just tell you that i mean well, you don't have to like i'm on my best behavior right now because i'm in public on the internet but you know no, i mean i've seen you at work you, look i'm what i'm saying is like at least from my own experience there's sometimes we get too caught up in the nitty-gritty of things and maybe not focus on the on the big picture and i hope you don't think i'm talking on to you um I, you, so. yeah, I hope that doesn't come across that way. I'm just, it, it's just um, when we were growing up and we were getting closer to faith, you realize like how many different things you could have spent your time more wisely on. And, yeah. uh, and I'm not belittling what you're doing in terms of perfecting your manners and things like that. But there's, um, there's a, there's a balance to everything. And sometimes that can get tedious and, and, um, no matter what, you know, you, you end up finding faults within you and there, there's a, there's a lot to give back 
is what I guess what I'm trying to say is like sometimes you go too inward and not enough outward where you want to spread that goodness that you have and spread it to non-Muslims, other Muslims you know, in general who are struggling in Western society, um, at least yeah. in their relationship with their faith. Um, but uh, and that, that's at least the happy middle ground that I found right now. I'm, I'm not so much focused on any particular aspect of Islam. There's things that like Hakimiyah that still um, resonate, resonate deeply within me because I see all the, the suffering and carnage around the world and I see the direct result of what liberal thinkers like Chomsky have told us ab about for decades now um, that, that they said that this is the end result of what capitalism is or the exploitative practices of capitalism are doing to the world. We're seeing uh, uh, the consequences of that much more sooner than we had a ever anticipated. And um, just seeing that come to life right in front of my eyes all over the world is just something that is um, really pushing me harder to make sure this podcast works, bring people like yourself on and help us, um, you know, come together and, and heal as a family and grow intellectually so that we understand some of our problems and challenges better so that, you know, we can all grow intelligently through healthy, healthy discourse, you, you know, and, and uh, we have a lot of disagreements um, on our show, even among our hosts, and we don't necessarily agree on everything. But, you know, I genuinely feel that having uh, a discussion towards um, the truth is better than, you know, just walking away and saying, you know what, yeah. to your way, your way, and my way, my way, you know. Yeah. Um, doing something's better than doing nothing. Yeah. yeah. But uh, any closing thoughts? What else you got on your mind? Anything you want to say uh, before you wrap this baby up? Not in particular. I was kind of going off of your uh, your direction here. Did I, did I miss anything that you really want to talk about? Speak now uh, or forever hold your. Well, I mean, I think you. I think we kind of branched off from when the Hakamiya conversation yeah. came up. But you mentioned that uh, there was the person who had emailed you, and he was wanting to. Yeah. I don't know if he wanted to know if it would help him to learn more about. Yeah. What kind of advice my, would you give him? Well, what would you tell him about? Um, how he should come forward to his family in regards to um, coming out of the closet. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I can tell him what to do because I don't know his situation. Yeah. I don't know all of his details. I can just, just tell, tell you, us about tell yours. what I did. And yeah. if you learn something from that, good. You know, yeah. I'm there if not, then, you know, maybe someone else can provide better insight. But um so i being an atheist for so long you know my parents uh they didn't approve of my atheism but they weren't like as far as i know they weren't like distraught about it either like they're they're still christians uh, but when i decided that i was going to become a muslim uh you know the night before i took my shahada i called them and my dad's initial reaction was he was just happy i was i wasn't an atheist anymore and that i believed in god so he like he didn't know the details of Islam, but he was just relieved that I at least believed in God again and was no longer an atheist. Um, my mom's reaction was sort of like, she thought it was strange and kind of out of left field, which I mean it was. And uh, as far as it being sort of random, because I hadn't really ever discussed it with them before. Uh, so I just kind of told them right off the bat, but um, that's just the relationship that me and my parents have. I don't know if this person has a similar relationship, but, you know, I just, I told them right off the bat and, you know, I knew if they might get upset about it and they might, um, what's the word, like cut ties with me or they may not, but either way, it doesn't change that this is the truth. And I have to be upon it as best I can. Uh, and then over time, my dad sort of uh, moved closer to cutting ties with me uh, he they he lives in a southern typically cr like uh, predominantly Christian area, and I think him trying to do his own research and talking to people there uh, sort of gave him the wrong impression. So uh, he kind of cut ties with us for a little bit. Uh, us meaning me and my sister, because uh, she took shahada about six months after I did. Oh, mashallah. And um, but over time he kind of came around, and now we just sort of have a agree to disagree. Uh, attitude like we we talk about life but we don't talk about religion because he wants to have like a relationship with us but he doesn't want to talk about religion anymore 
So I hope one day he'll want to talk about it. But uh, until then, I'm just kind of waiting. Nice. And then, but something you mentioned at work the other day that was kind of funny was as soon as me and my sister became Muslim, all of a sudden my parents start taking Christianity seriously again. But before that, you know, as far as I know, they were. And we always just thought that was kind of strange that, like, all of a sudden everyone we know is taking religion seriously because we became Muslim. But when we were, when I was an atheist and my sister was kind of on this hippie create your own religion deal, like, nobody cared. But now all of a sudden we're Muslims and everyone cares. So, like, I don't know. I just thought that was odd. That's it. Oh, people are funny creatures. But, uh, man, thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Um, Anytime. I, I really if, appreciate uh, it. And, if, and I, I'm sorry that I didn't bring... I, I, I just wanted this one-on-one -on -one with you, to be honest. I felt like we didn't, we didn't have a chance to really connect at work. And I felt like this is just something new that we could do on the podcast. Just I always like to try out different things and make the podcast more enjoyable for the listeners. And um, I felt like, you know what, Brian can come on with Sheikh Hamer and whoever you want on a show on a, on a separate, on another occasion. Yeah, sure. Shallow, you'll be more in touch with us. You don't live too far away. So yeah. um, we would... I know those if guys it, would love uh, to meet you as well. If it doesn't cause too much of a, a ruckus in the yeah. chat, you know, I'm glad to come back anytime. Hey, um, what, what you said, I don't think any scholar would disagree with that. I don't, I wouldn't feel bad about some, they just, a lot of times they don't talk about it because of these type of things. Sometimes you see a little bit too much controversy and you have to end up explaining more than you actually were intending to. Yeah. And, um, it's it's not very controversial what he what he said. If if you're confused in the chat, maybe we can have a a podcast on it more. I I, I think we've had podcasts regarding it, um, but probably we need we might need something more in depth in the future. Yeah. yeah. Um. Thank you so much, Ryan. Um. Oops. I'm sorry, Abdul Hakim. <laughs> it's no big deal. Anyway. I mean, technically, you're supposed to go by your birth name, but I just uh, I like having a quote unquote Muslim name, so. But yeah, no big deal. Awesome, brother. Um, for my guest, Abdul Hakim, my name is Sim. We'll see y'all later. Asalaamu Alaikum. Oh.